All right, welcome back. Uh, the Hope, Hope Prevails is the book. The author is Dr. Michelle Bankson, and we talked about the pronunciation. I've been interviewing people for 20 years, and I always double check the pronunciation of the last name. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming in today. Oh, so glad to be here. I read the book over the weekend, and uh, I want to start with my takeaway. And I mentioned this off the top. My takeaway was I am one of those people who had no idea they were suffering from depression. Mm -hmm. This is a common thing. I wouldn't be the only person who was depressed but didn't know it. You would not. I have people come into my office all the time. They know something's not quite right, but they don't know what it is. Mm. And when I share with them that what they're dealing with is depression, they're almost astounded. Mm. Because that's something nobody wants to go through. Mm. Nobody wants to admit. And even within the church, sometimes it's hard. We'll get to that a little later. Um, talk to me about the prevalence of depression. Oh. So if we look at, let's just, let's just stay in North America. So if we look at North American society, um, how prevalent is it? Well, one in four adults will experience depression at some point in their lifetime. But by 2020, Todd, depression is going to be our greatest epidemic worldwide. So if you don't know someone, or if you don't struggle with it, you know someone who does. Now, beyond the effects on the person themselves, um, it's safe to say that the effects of depression cascade into broader culture. Yes, there has an effect on health care. There's an effect more than just in the, the person's life. It does. Well, not just affects the person, but it affects their spouse, their family, their employment. Many days are taken off work because people are depressed and they can't get out of bed. They just, they just can't function the way they're used to functioning. Now, you say when people often show up, they don't know that they've been depressed. But what's presenting? How would they know that something's wrong? Are there some signs that are typical or perhaps would occur, you know, regularly enough that you go, you might be dealing with depression. Yeah. What are some of the signs? Well, part of the reason people don't know that they're struggling with it is because a stereotypical picture of depression is someone who's crying all the time and can't mm. get out of bed. Right. But it, depression is experienced in different ways by different people. But there's almost always a change in personality, a change in mood, and then there's something that happens in their daily functioning that affects sleep or energy mm. or appetite. But some people, when they're depressed, present as if they're angry. Really? Mm -hmm. That's a very common symptom. Now, how do you know that this has progressed beyond just garden variety sadness uh, into something that might be clinical, might be actually a treatable condition, something where I need to go seek professional help? Are there some markers that there you to watch for? Yes, because, you know, we all have that bad day. Mm. We all have the day when we just... Things just aren't right. Mm. But when this progresses beyond a couple weeks or into a month, okay. then it's something that we, you really need to seek help for. And it may just be going to your medical doctor because sometimes there are medical conditions that can bring about symptoms of depression. Mm. So if we eradicate those, it might go away. Mm. The problem is too many people try to self-diagnose or avoid diagnosis. Now, the question that occurs to me, and I'm sure is occurring to those watching, is what causes it? Is this brain chemistry? Is this, are there many factors? Can we isolate it down to some predictable ones? What are the, are there root causes we can say, yes, this, 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 and this are typical? There are. Well, there's a lot of contributors, mm. you know, genetics mm. and circumstances. We have those stresses in our life. Mm -hmm. But part of what I talk about in Hope Prevails is the fact that there's also a spiritual contributor to it. And if we don't address that, then we're really just putting a Band-Aid on it. Mm. Because scripture says the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy destroy. Mm. And he does that in the case of depression. Okay, so, let, so let's go there. That to me seems to be the unique contribution of this book. Mm -hmm. um, I've read some books on depression and mental health in general. This is the first time I have read a book that specifically used phrases like the spirit of fear. Right. So first, you tell me your perspective on that spiritual element, and then I have a pointed question for you. But so what is the spiritual component uh, from your experience? It's the enemy coming in and whispering lies to us. And we begin to believe those lies rather than the truth of God's word. Mm. So let's be clear. When you say the enemy, who do you mean? Satan. Okay. So literally the devil. Yes. Okay. So the devil is lying to somebody. So do you, I mean, how particular do we get with this in terms of specifically what's happening? When I read the spirit of fear, the spirit of sadness, do we, and I'm not trying to make it sound crazy, but I was just like, wow, like, are we thinking literally a fallen angel has been assigned to a particular person to make them sad? Is this screw tape letters? Is this C.S. Lewis-ish in terms of what you think is happening? Well, it is because it, it, the thoughts that we have are either coming from the Holy Spirit or they're coming from the enemy. Mm. And so it, it can be thoughts like, I, I'm just no good. Mm. It can be thoughts like, I'm just worthless. Mm. For me, I believe the lie that I was joy immune. Well, as long as I believe that lie, which is not consistent with Scripture, mm. it was a great playground for depression to wreak its havoc. 
Those lies, where do they come from? Are they seeded sometimes in our early years? Oh, frequently. Mm -hmm. Frequently they can come about by a parent, they can come about by a coach or a teacher. You know, the words that we say can breathe life or death, blessing or cursing. This is the thing and that, that's what we're seeing. This is the thing that freaks me out about being a dad. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll be having a bad day and uh, I'll say something and I'm immediately thinking about the effect this might have 10 years down the road. You said that you saw sadness modeled by your mom. Mm -hmm. My mother struggled with depression the whole time I was growing up, but we didn't know that's what it was. Mm. We just thought that's the way she was. Mm. We didn't have the term depression, and it was only later that I realized, oh my goodness, if we had treated this appropriately, mm. she could have experienced real joy instead of going around every day Okay, this. so we're about halfway through. Let's pivot to some of the things that can be done. So if someone is watching, they're going, that's me, you're talking about me, this is, this is my life. That was um, me. Yeah, so, that was my life. So how do they begin the process of walking out of the long darkness into the beginnings of the dawn of a new day? How do they, how do they start? Where do they start? What are some, some things they can do? It's the, the most important thing they can do is to be in God's Word. Mm. Writing down God's promises, His truths to them. So unpack that in a practical way. That means literally reading the Bible every day? It does. Should they get a reading plan? Like how much should they be reading? Have you found there's a, a typical way that is most helpful? No. It's just, okay. it's reading until they're spoken to. God speaks through His Word. Okay, there's your point, right? Yes. If, I wouldn't have thought of that. So, so you're reading and then, like I always read my Bible with a pen, is that what you're saying? Like you keep reading it until God, like something jumps into your something, mind? Something jumps out at you that, mm. that then you then meditate on. Uh, you know, scripture says to take captive every thought. Mm. Well, the only way we can do that and to bring it into obedience with Christ Jesus mm -hmm. is to know what the Word says so that we know if it lines up with God's Word or not. Mm -hmm. But if we don't know His Word, we can't. We're more susceptible to those lies of the enemy. Okay, so stay in God's Word. What else? Mm -hmm. I would recommend you write down those scriptures that are affirming, that are encouraging. You recite them every day. You put them where you're going to see them. Ah, like on your fridge or in your work? Well, I had a whole or... wall in my bedroom that was plastered with post-it notes of scripture. Now, the, the long walk out is a long walk out, right? Like it's a the, journey. The turnaround wasn't immediate for you. It was not. Tell me no, a little bit about that. It was that. several months. How long did it take? Probably took about nine months. Come on. From start to finish. Was there a finish? Can someone watching look forward to a day when they feel like, oh, I'm not as sad anymore? Absolutely. Can you identify that moment for you? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. I remember at one point going, this is what the joy of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. After I'd felt so many years that I must be joy immune. How old are you when that happened? Uh, 45. So are you telling me 45 years of really not knowing what the joy of the Lord means, of not experiencing uh, it? And happiness. And sure. I did have joy, but when I went into depression, I, I, I was lost. What's the difference between happiness and joy in well, your experience? I really think joy is being able to be content despite our circumstances. Ah. Hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're having necessarily a really bad day you are able to walk through it without losing perspective yeah. completely. I mean, we're going through a situation now where my husband has cancer, mm. but I can still find joy because God is still on his throne. Whether he's healed now or not, it doesn't matter mm. because God is still faithful. He is still good. He says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Mm. Those are the kinds of truths we have to stand on. Are there any contributing factors in our daily life in the Western world with the way our society has developed that you see as particularly affecting uh, people's susceptibility to depression. Absolutely. Things that we do, habits that we have. Can you highlight some of those yeah. from your experience as a because doctor? Because comparison is the thief of joy. <laughs> so we get on social media, oh, we look on Instagram, we look at Twitter, we look at the Facebook likes. Right. Our kids are looking at Snapchat, you know, and all the likes. Well, what if we don't have as many likes as somebody else? So do you say stay away from it altogether? Is there some way to participate but not allow it to dominate? No, we, but we recognize God created all of us. He created all of us equally. He died for all of us. It's a level playing ground, mm. but God has a different purpose for each of our lives. And my purpose is not going to be the same as yours. Mm. I said in a sermon years ago, the problem with social media is that you're looking at everyone else's highlight reels while living your behind the scenes. That's right. Right. And no one's life is as perfect as it looks once we've put a filter on That's it. That's right. So for someone who feels like you've just read their mail, um, when they go out and get this book, Hope Prevails, what are they going to find in it? What are they going to take from it? What are the one, two, three things that you know as its author uh, are going to speak directly into their life? 
Well, they're going to recognize where those lies are coming from. There's going to, they're going to recognize that there is a spiritual component, but then they're going to see that the other part of that verse is that Jesus said, but I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Mm. But it takes work, Todd. Mm. You know, Jesus asked the lame man if he wanted to get well mm. for a reason because there was work. He had to pick up his mat ah. and walk. It's the same thing. And there's a prescription at the end of every chapter. I like that about every work. chapter, yeah. And there's a playlist too mm. that's filled with encouraging kind of praise unique. and worship. Like you think music will actually help? Oh, I know it will. Universally, like everyone who, well, well maybe not universally, not but in most cases. everybody relates to music, yeah. but frequently that's an area, you know, God inhabits the praises of his people. <laughs> and sometimes we're too depressed to say praises, but we can sing them. And that makes the enemy flee. I love it. I love it. It's like worship by osmosis. It, absolutely. When yeah. I can't sing, let someone else sing. Hope Prevails is the book. Dr. Michelle Bankson, thank you so much. You're so welcome. What a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Listen, if uh, she was reading your mail, uh, give us a call right now, 1-866-273-4444. And uh, we have someone who will pray with you. You're not alone. You're not the only one. I dealt with this for three and a half years. Jesus can see you through. We love you.